morning with the scripture reading from the New Testament. This is Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 8. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified on the third day, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. This is the word of the Lord. Each of the gospel accounts of the Easter story have their unique take. They're all slightly different. Um, each brings uh, some memorable detail to life that just seems to, to give its own piece that brings it all to life. My favorite has always been Mark because it's the most basic. The women show up. They get there. They're afraid. Jesus isn't there. It's risen. They, and then they run away and they say nothing to no one because they're so afraid. And then the gospel ends. With them all going back to the beginning because Jesus says to meet me in Galilee. And so let's go relive this all. Let's get the band back together. and Let's do this again and again and again. I was like that about Mark. But I like this one too. Because somewhere in the midst of this all, they all of a sudden they remember his words. Like, right. Oh yeah. Now it all makes sense. It makes sense because now... It has been fulfilled. You ever think about things in a new light? Like you're thinking about something, all of a sudden it dawns on you, and then you see it, the truth or the, that thing, and then you can't see it any other way after that. It all makes sense finally. Now you can't even go back and see it another way. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing, right? When sometimes you see something, I don't want to ever see that again, but you can't not see it. <laughs> but in this case, it's the fulfillment of all things. The disciples remember back to the things that they had heard Jesus say, saying. And, and now, it all dawns on them. Oh yeah, now it's been fulfilled. Now those things that Jesus was saying back then that didn't make any sense all of a sudden do. I want to do the same. Lent, I think, a lot of people think that Lent is about giving up something or, or fasting and, 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 and becoming closer because of the, the torture that you're doing for yourself of, 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 of limiting something that you really want. I think Lent was created to help pastors out. Um... Because if you do Lent, well, it makes Easter make a lot more sense. And, and it's hard to preach on Easter because you do it every year. And it's the exact same story every year. There might be four versions of it. But it's the same thing, right? The tomb is empty. And if you're worth anything as a preacher, you don't just preach Easter on Easter. You preach it all year long. And so how do you take something that is the center point of everything that you preach about and then make it special on its special day just because there's lilies behind it? And there's candy out the field waiting. <laughs> and it'll melt if you don't get to it. So if, if you're a visitor today, we have been going through something during this Lent that, I, that we call it a Lenten discipline. And we've taken through a number of steps. And if you want more information, I'd be happy to give it to you and let you see it. Um, but it, it's left its marks. It's left its marks. And it's, it's made it so that I can 
preach today about Easter in a way that leans on all of that hard work. It's the fulfillment of all of that study and work. It's left its marks, and speaking of marks, this all started with Ash Wednesday, where some of us got together and we put marks on our foreheads and said, and, and the words that went with that were, to dust, from dust you have come, to dust you shall return. Remembering that frailty. We paired with that a scripture verse that was, all people are like grass. We looked at the, that first week at the darkness. We asked questions like, have you ever felt out of place in this world? Have you ever felt out of place in this church? Have you ever felt out of place? Have you ever felt lonely? <coughs> Have you ever felt forsaken? Abandoned? Have you ever felt doubt about anything? And we talked about it, we embraced it. We said it was okay to experience that darkness. It was okay to look and go into the pit. It was okay to, to feel that despair. Because we knew that today was going to come. And now we can look back on that and see how it comes together. See how it came together. See how those worries and fears have been fulfilled. Remember this. We are afraid of pain, but more afraid of silence. For no nightmare of hostile objects could be as terrible as this void, this abomination. For this is the wrath of God. The idea that God would not even be there. That God would be dead on a cross somewhere. That God would be put into a, into a tomb somewhere. That the powers of the world, no matter what they are, are stronger than God would ever hope to be. We allowed ourselves to think that, if only for a minute, knowing that the void did not exist. That God fills that void. And we can lean on that. We looked at the great song from the doors, Riders on the Storm. And to this house we're born, and to this world we're thrown. And all of that existential lostness. But now it has been fulfilled, and the angel says, be not afraid. We can go to such places, we can go to even those depths, and not be afraid of falling into that abyss, or into that void. Because Christ went there for us. We were introduced to a bunch of different stories, right? Dante, remember where he was? Lost in the wood of error, he sees the mountain ahead and he says, I want to go there. The light shines over the mountain. He says, I want to go there. And he heads out. And all of a sudden there's these animals, these beasts, and is blocking his path. He says, you can't go that way. So he cowers back into the forest. But then an angel from heaven sends Virgil to him and he leads them through the path of recognizing sin and renouncing sin and being left to the place where he could experience love. And he ends up here in paradise. I'm going to read for you those last words from that book, The Divine Comedy. Just so was I on seeing this new vision, I wanted to see how our image fuses into the circle and finds its place in it. Yet my wings were not meant for such, such a flight, except that then my mind was struck by lightning, through which my longing was at last fulfilled. Here powers failed my high imagination, but by now my desire and will were turned like a balanced wheel, rotated evenly by love that moves the sun and the other stars. Dante had found his place in the world where he had been lost. Fulfilled so that he could become finally at peace with his place in the universe. Think about that other story.
Passover, we learn the Red Cross night, right? He wanted to make his bones in the world. He wanted to prove his worthiness. So he asks for a quest. They send him on the quest to go slay the dragon. He heads off and he gets lost, like Dante and me. <laughs> in the wood of error. He finds his way through that wood of error. He separates himself from the truth. He becomes a slave to pride. And he's lost, forsaken in a dungeon. But somehow, he gets to the dragon and defeats it. And we see that he was actually never off the path one time. That everything that he did, all of those missteps, all of that pride, all of that dungeon, all of those things were things that were teaching him how to defeat evil when the evil arose. He was never off the path, ever. And when things were fulfilled, all of a sudden he could see that. Fulfillment opens our eyes. What about Christian from the Pilgrim's Progress? We talked about him too. He loses his burden when he takes the journey. It just falls from his back when he sees the cross. And when he reaches that celestial city, this is what he says. Now I saw in my dream that these two men went in at the gate, and lo, as they entered, they were transfigured, and they had raiment put on that shone like gold. There was also that the men had harps and crowns and gave them to them, and the harps to praise with all the crowns and token of honor. And then I heard in my dream that all the bells in the city rang again for joy, and that it was said unto them, Enter ye into the joy of your Lord. I heard the men themselves, that they sang with a loud voice, saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Fulfillment. Now we're not going to go back and look at all of it. But think about the pattern and how each part is connected to this idea of fulfillment. The parts were sin and being stuck in sin. Conversion, finding a new path. Discernment, wondering what I am and what I am to do. Resolution, making the decision to do the thing. Perseverance, being strong enough to keep walking. Passing the torch to the next person. And then finally, fulfillment. But fulfillment makes life not a line, but a circle. Never. Are you out of it? Nothing can separate you from it. Nothing. There might be times when you, you think you've all got it figured out, and then you're walking along, next thing you don't, and you're back to the beginning. In that place of sin and doubt, mystified about what this could be. There's a place you're walking along, you know who you are, you found it out, I'm deciding to do it, and you try to persevere, and you get knocked down. You're never off the path. The path includes the cross and that degradation. It, it's all of it. It's all encompassing. You're never off the path. You might get to the point where you've done it all. Look, I've done all of this. I'm now at the point to pass the torch. When I look right, nobody worthy of me passing this torch to them. There's nothing but fools surrounding me. And you have to be shown the light again. And you walk, and you walk, and you fall, and you walk, and you fall. And it's all a circle, and you're never off of it. And you live a life again, and again, and again, and again, with each decision that you make, with each day that you have, with each, each thing that you do. It's all part of this same circle. Paul says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate you or us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That 
hey, if we're never outside of the circle, it doesn't matter what you do, what you think, what you say, what you're doubt. It doesn't matter. You're all part of the circle. You're being dragged forward and around all of it. You're never separate. There is no perfection in the Christian life. Brought it up in Sunday school last week. One of my favorite plays is a movie's Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Elizabeth Taylor, Maggie the Cat. Paul Newman is lost and searching. And he asks her, What is salvation for a cat on a hot tin? Just staying home. And to know to know that you can't fall off is an amazing promise. That there is no perfection. And at the same time that there is no prescription. I can't stand up and tell you what your life should be at any moment. I can't even tell you that this is the pattern that you should follow. Although it makes sense to me. It's like the golf swing. Perfection is unattainable. Any of you ever seen Tin Cup? Tin Cup is out by the girl he's flirting with trying to teach about the golf swing, he says, the opening phrase of this poem will always be the grip. Hands unite. To form a single unit, simple overlap, little finger, lowly and slowly the club head is led back, pulled into position not by the hands but by the body, which turns away from the target, shifting weight to the right side without shifting balance. Tempo is all perfection, unattainable. At the top of the swing, there's a hesitation, a little nod to the gods, to the gods that he is fallible, and that again, perfection is unattainable. Weight shifts to the left, pulled by the powers in the earth. It's alive, the swing and its sculpture, and down through contact, striking the ball crisply with character, a tuning fork, goes off in your loins. Such a pure feeling as the well-struck golf shot. Then the follow through to finish always online. The reverse C of the golden bear, the steel workers palette, Carl Sandburg, the Arnold Palmer, the unfinished symphony. Roy McAvoy. What's unfinished, he asked. He says, I have a short follow-through. It's an unfinished look. Why, some say, it's the easiest to play. Ridiculous. I know perfection is unattainable. <laughs> Why, some say, it's the easiest way to play through the winds of West Texas, and some say it's because I've never finished anything. is unattainable. It doesn't matter. So what's it about then? If perfection is unattainable, if there's no prescription, what's it about? The walk. The striving. The fulfillment that is brought about not by the perfection of ourselves, but by the perfection of Jesus Christ. By God. Such it is that Easter 
chose us. Not ourselves, but Jesus. Not us, but God. No finish line. Just a never-ending cycle. A never-ending circle. New direction. Following it. Persevering it. Passing it on to others again and again. And we might not follow all the parts. Our feet might slip. We might find ourselves back at the beginning again and again. We might get struck in the face with events that send us reeling in despair. But we are never off that path. Because the circle, that circle includes it all, even our worst doubts. The cross does that for us. It includes it all. So what can we hope for? To have the circle tighten. All we can hope for is to have the circle tighten. So that we may live the entire strike cycle the entire circle in a moment and then every moment and each moment and then we are encircled and walking with God completely and never separated so the goal is not completion of any job but the tightening of the circle think about it to take each step in fear but lay faithfully at the same time Converted, discerned, resolute, persevering, passing off, and fulfilled every single moment. And then the next, and then the next, and then the next. To never have to hold on too tight because it's time to pass on to the next. To never worry about where you're going to go because it's there. You've just taken it. Take another. That's the hope. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days, all the moments. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But yet, we aren't there. In our lives, there is a delay. There are spaces of doubt, fear, worry. There is places where we grab control rather than letting go and letting it happen. And all those times that we do that creates space between ourselves and God, and it creates space between ourselves and each other. That separation that is driven by worry and care and division and the clouds and darkness. That is what separates us. Let me read to Dante again. I wanted to see how our image fuses into the circle and finds its place in it. Yet my wings were not meant for such a flight. Except that then my, my mind was struck by lightning through which my longing was at last fulfilled. Look at that. The moment he says he can't do it himself, boom, the lightning strikes and he gets it. Here powers failed my high imagination. But by now my desire and will were turned like a balanced wheel rotated evenly by the love that moved the sun and the other stars. The circle had contracted enough that he led all the parts of the circle in one moment. And it was a moment of fulfillment. That is the dream that we can get there. But most of us will instead walk the path of struggle. In Sunday school, we were talking of Valjean. Remember, we were introduced to him too, the criminal that was redeemed by the bishop. He fixes his life, but, it, but in hiding, he renews a town. He finds that his true calling is to leave a girl, a little child who is in darkness, and set her to the light. <coughs> but he's faced with obstacles. There's the righteous that are an obstacle, there's the evil. That is an obstacle. There are the visionaries that are obstacles. 
There's the question, when is my job done? When is it time to set this child that I have raised free? Is this man that I'm going to give her to worth her? But he saves Mary. He saves her love from the barricade. He gives him to her, and he retreats into the shadows. Job finished, but yet he now has sacrificed himself completely, and he is left alone and forsaken by himself, ready to die. And then she shows up. bits of fulfillment that we find along the way. We don't have to wait till we die. We don't have to wait till we die. Our cup runs over all the time. The fulfillment isn't at the end, but throughout. It's what gives light and possibility to each piece. Now I can die in peace, he says, for now my life is blessed. Tells her the story. And she dies. He dies. The angel of her mother, who he had promised all those years before, comes and takes him to his breast. We get pieces of fulfillment all along the way. All along the way. That allows the circle to tighten. song goes, do you hear the people sing lost in the valley of the night? It is the music of a people who are climbing to the light. Let's climb together. Let's stand in a circle hand in hand. Let us help each other. Christ shows.